It's the very first episode of Belmont Buzz in 2020. And we are going to be talking to key town officials, such as who I have right next to me, Selectman Roy Epstein, about changes to come in the next 10 years. We have a new decade here, and we are reporting from the development in Cushing Square known as the Bradford, which is supposed to be opening in 2020. So why don't we... Start off with that, uh, Roy, as far as changes to come in 2020. We have a huge development here that's going to have 115 luxury apartments from studios to two bedrooms that will hopefully bring more revenue to the town, maybe more parking to the area. But I don't know. What do you think? I think it will be great. Uh, first off, uh, this has been in kind of a underdeveloped area for a long time. I think the building is very fine. It reflects a lot of hard work by the planning board. I look forward both to the additional housing and also to new commercial development here. I think it will make it will make Cushing Square a much better place. Yeah, I know you live in the area, right? I do about a block away from here. So, so you're definitely looking forward. It's been it's been a long time coming though, and, and the construction has been delayed about a year, right? A lot of people have complained about the length of the construction process, but that was in the beginning due to I think very good oversight by the planning board. At this point um, the, con the developer has every incentive to finish as quickly as possible, and I assume that that's what they will do. There's, I don't see any, there's no slowdown from the town end, and, and it's in the developer's interest now just to get this done. So how will this development have a positive impact on Belmont? Do you see it as having a positive impact? Yes, I think having additional housing right on the bus line is good, and I think having additional retail in Cushing Square will be very good. What about the impact it could have on the school system, potentially more students? That is a real concern, not just uh, here at the Bradford, but in other possible developments around town. And um, I just don't know what to expect right now, but the school system, I believe, is maxed out. And any significant additional number of uh, students coming from this development, I think, would be a, a real question. Right, and I know they're, they're trying to limit that by having limiting the number of two bedrooms. They have studios, one bedrooms, and a very limited number of, of two bedroom apartments. Yes, but uh, even one bedroom apartment is compatible with having at least one child. Uh, having grown up knowing people who lived in very small apartments in Brooklyn, uh, it could happen. But we don't, we don't want to be known as an anti-child or a, you know an, an unfriendly child community, right? I mean, Belmont is all about kids in the community in the schools we are not anti-child at all we are we in fact have had a greater in I've just been reviewing the data on this Belmont has had a greater increase in the number of children in the schools than most of our surrounding peer towns so we, we are a very child-friendly community we just happen to be maxed out at the time well what else can we talk about coming up in 2020 there's a lot there's a lot I think actually in 2020 not in 2020 in the next decade well, looking at 10 years is hard, but even this year, um, I'm looking forward to the hockey rink RFP going out. We're going to vote on that at the select board and the school committee next week. Uh, there's going to be a further question of development at McLean, which is a very interesting question the select board has yet to discuss. Uh, back in November town meeting, I talked about how I in intended to propose GIC as an alternative for town for health insurance for town employees. I expect to act on that and urge my fellow uh, board members to act on that. Uh, remember from the discussion of the interviews of the police chief, um, they're, they're concerned that the town should move away from civil service. I think that's something for the town to investigate. Uh, the police station work, which I've been very much a part of, is going on, I, and the DPW is supposed to finish up 
uh, in the next couple of weeks. So there, there's a lot of very uh, positive development from projects that have been a long time coming, but they're going to happen. I agree. It, it's very, it's a very exciting time in Belmont, a, a small community. How many square miles again? Five? Well, five, but actually the the actual populated part is less than half of that. So it's we're actually extremely densely settled. But we're growing. There's no doubt about it. We are. We are. And speaking of growth, um, there is a need for more revenue to keep up with the demand, right, in the town. I mean, there's a need for an override. There is a... Uh, the, the financial task force is working on the specific numbers uh, for that override, but there will be an override in the ballot in the fall, and that's a source of great concern. Why do you say that? Because it's going to be big. It's going to be big unless there are um, significant actions either on the revenue generation side or on cost containment. Um, or in getting a bright idea, and I'm working on the bright idea department, but I'm not prepared to uh, tell you what, but I expect by springtime uh, I will make a proposal. Really? Okay. So are you involved with the financial task force too? No, there's been a division of labor where um, uh, Tom Caputo from the select board is the representative of the financial task force, and I have not been part of that. But I'm sure you're following it really closely because they're the ones that will come up with this number for the override. Am I right? I will follow it closely, but they've actually not released a report yet, so I'm not aware of uh, exactly what they're going to propose. So they'll have a proposal, and then does the select board still have to approve it before it goes on the ballot? The magnitude of any override request would be approved by the select board, yes. Well, there's definitely a lot that you have going on. You've only been a select board member for one year. How has that been? It's been very interesting. It's gone by quickly, but you know the range. What makes this interesting is the the range of questions that comes before the board is uh, really incredible. Everything from these budget issues to development issues to uh, building project issues. Uh, you know, I also sit uh, right now as the you know the board of selectmen sits as the municipal light board, and I'm the chair of the light board right now. We're going to be dealing with things like um, the introduction of 5G technology into town. Uh, there's we're thinking of introducing some sort of renewable energy project at the incinerator site, uh, which would be in the form of either. Uh, storage batteries on a large scale or possibly a solar development. Uh, the Belmont Light itself is continuing with its infrastructure improvements with eventual decommissioning of the uh, substations that will raise the question of what to do with that land. There's, there's a lot of questions actually on so many different fronts. There's a lot happening with Belmont Light as well in the next decade. Yes, indeed. And, you know, I, I wouldn't venture to say, you know, in a decade where we'll be, except that I do hope that our uh, pension liability uh, will be paid off or nearly paid off. That's going to be a big question also for financial management for the, in the next 10 years. Right. That's something that I know Jim Williams was pretty concerned about, right? Former select men. Yes. And we, we do have a plan in place, but to achieve that plan by 2029 is going to be, it's going to be a challenge. So, so speaking of growth in Belmont, do you know, Roy, how much the population has grown in Belmont over the last 10 years? I don't know the exact number. We certainly have grown. Uh, I think it's on the order of one to 2,000 people. But I think the more pressing question right now is the fact that we have a census in 2020. And uh, Kathy Cohane has spoken to the select board about a program called Complete Count. So it's very important for everybody in Belmont to be counted uh, properly for purposes of the census, because that goes into, um, that has so many effects on programs that we're el eligible for, and big picture questions like the number of congressional seats Massachusetts has and that sort of thing. So the uh, participation in the census this year will be very important. Roy, I know, I know you're also involved with the Community Path Project Committee. Can you tell us what will be happening with that in the next decade? 
Well, hopefully in 10 years it'll be finished, but there's a lot to do before then. Um, the engineer was retained uh, this past fall, and they're supposed to come up with what's called 25% design by the springtime, which really means laying out in some detail exactly what the path will look like and where and how. Uh, to get there, there's going to be a, a big public meeting later this month where the engineer, the engineering firm, which is called Niche, uh, will make its presentation and invite participation from the public. And as soon as the details of that meeting are announced, I hope that uh, as many people will attend as possible so Niche can get their input. I know, that's very exciting. It's also exciting that we're going to have state funding for that project. Uh, exciting and also essential <laughs> because it, it'll be uh, pretty expensive. And I know the Alexander un underpass is going to be part of that design. Is that part of the 25% that they're working on? Yes, the, the project is really the two pieces, the underpass at Alexander Avenue and then the, the path leading from Clark Street and Pleasant Street, uh, Clark Street Bridge at Pleasant Street all the way down to Brighton Street. But there are many, many significant engineering challenges to make it all happen, both for the path and the tunnel and I'm very curious to see what Niche will be able to propose. Channing Road residents are, are also, they have concerns about this. What are their concerns? Uh, I think they have concerns mainly about the proximity of the path to their yards and sight lines into the yards, but I, I think that there's been a lot of discussion already that addresses a lot of those concerns, but th the details will really be worked out uh, when Niche reports back, which I hope will uh, be covered in some detail during this public meeting. Any idea what the timeline looks like? Like when this project could potentially start? The, um, as I mentioned, the 25% design, which is the first big milestone, will be is supposed to be done by late this spring. Um, the funding to actually build it probably won't be available for another two years. But I, I think within three to five years, uh, we should see something in the ground. Surely within the next decade. Within the next decade, yes. We are young enough to see the end of this, yes. It's exciting. That'll be really good for the high school, too, for the kids in the neighborhood, in the Winbrook neighborhood, to safely get to school. Well, I, I think it's just uh, the type of amenity that should be available in most communities. Just yesterday, I was in a beautiful path um, down on the Milton-Dorchester border uh, going along the Neponset River, and it's great. Uh, every town should have one. And it may potentially cut back traffic, potentially? Uh, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a wonderful amenity in its own right. That would be a nice change to see in the next decade, less traffic in Belmont. I've talked to Will Brownsberger a bit about that. I, I think one of the major long-term issues to adjust traffic will be better utilization of the Fitchburg line. Uh, our roads are maxed out, and the train service, I think, is just ins um, it's insufficient given the demand. And, but that, that is a very long-term uh, challenge, but I believe we can work on that. It's good that we have Will Brownsberger as a town resident who can maybe help out. Yes, Will is fantastically thoughtful and attentive to all of these things. I'm sure you have a lot of hopes for the next decade, the next 10 years, but what would you say is your greatest hope? What do you hope happens in Belmont over the next decade? I hope that Belmont remains on a fiscally sound course. Uh, I think the, the town has so many tremendous advantages, starting first with the people who live here. We have a, a tremendously vibrant, creative, involved group of residents. And uh, I want the town to be continue to be attractive to them. I think our infrastructure is always getting better now. And uh, to, con to make Belmont uh, con to continue as a wonderful place to live and make it available to uh, as many people as possible would be the greatest challenge and the greatest reward. Well, it's nice having you on the show. Thanks for coming by on this beautiful January day. Pleasure. Ask me any time and I'll be happy to say yes. <laughs>